As you can see, Parker's been over here just shredding open boxes, shredding boxes. <laughs> putting his new motor uh, bed together. The, I've been ordering parts for like three weeks and we've been <laughs> on the road traveling. I've been working like crazy, so I haven't been able to get up to the shop in a while. And so I'm like literally a little kid on Christmas morning, as you can see. He literally had a stock, a stack of boxes this high. <laughs> Every day there's a box or two that shows up for Parker. Everyone always bragging about their Kershaws around here, but let's be honest, Benchmade's where it's at. We all know that. Oh, man, that's a call out right there. Let us know in the comments, Benchmade versus Kershaw. That's a good battle right there. Fix that. Oh, dude, then my own oil paint? No, no. It's not that pointable. I know it's super easy to forget to take care of yourself, especially when you're at the track. We're all drinking Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. This toothbrush is only $39. It's a great electric toothbrush. That's what I use every day. Normally they're $59, but if you click the link in the description below or use my coupon code QDNASK, you can get this toothbrush for only 39 bucks. Buy one for yourself, your girlfriend, whoever. They are an awesome toothbrush. It's basically the same thing as a Sonicare, except a tenth of the price. So go get one. They send you a new brush out every three months so you don't have to worry about it. It's a great deal. Welcome back to another episode of Teeth and Turbos. It's been like two weeks since the latest upload, but I've got a lot of parts here. I've been waiting for everything to get in stock before I uploaded my next video because there's a lot of stuff that's going into this new build. As you can see, I got my new motor here and the old one here. I'm taking all the parts off of that one and pretty much putting everything new on the car. I mean, the train is getting upgraded. The engine is getting upgraded water pump, uh, intake, intercooler. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Basically the only th limiting factor that's gonna be left is the suspension. It's pretty much a stock style sp suspension setup right now with strange shocks and springs. And I'm gonna need to switch it over to coilovers with torque boxes. So if I wanna keep up with these quick guys like that one and that one and that one and this one, then I really have a lot of work to do on the suspension, especially since I'm going to be switching over to a radial. A lot of changes on the car, really excited for it, but I know there's going to be a lot of R&D that goes into getting this thing right. It's not just going to be a slap it together car anymore, especially with so much more power I'm going to be producing. All right, let's dive into these boxes. Got a lot of cool stuff that showed up. Huge upgrade from motion. Going with the Icon 102 millimeter throttle body. There she is. It's gonna fit perfect up here on this Texas speed intake. Let's take a look at this. Uh, now, this throttle body is super easy to hook up. All you gotta do is put your factory TPS and IAC sensors into the throttle body. It's ready to go for GM stuff. And then I also brought this throttle cable bracket for uh, the throttle body to fit onto the Texas speed intake. So let's get that put together. Here we got Jack Stan, the tranny. I mean, Jimmy helping me out getting my trans back together. Yeah, give me that tap. Yeah, give me a little. Oh, shit. Throwing You're hands. right on the Throwing pointer hands. toe. All right, so this is where the trans brake goes. It's got a little spring in there. It's showing a lot of resistance. Is it? Oh, there she is. The spring a bit and get them perfectly lined up. And see it. Oh, yeah. So then the trans brake solenoid. Yeah, you put down there, you put the rounded end down. Yep, and then this will screw in. And then this is what we use for reverse and for the trans brake. Two step launch, launch control. If you push that in a little bit, I can hold it back for you so it's not fighting. That's probably because I'm doing this one handed. I got this. Not a left hand dominant, dominant are you? No, I'm a righty. Uh -huh. You can tell. Sometimes if I sit on my left hand long enough, it'll get numb. You use it like and then I can right then I use it like my right hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where's that? Uh, this is my uh, favorite tool. favorite tool. Favorite tool of 2021. Is this Boxo Metric? 
Everyone's got a different name for it. Everybody. Justable what Ranch. What do you call it? Justable Ranch. That's what it's called. Yeah, I know, but it can also be called a... Like, uh, some people call them like monkey ranches, spano ranches, and they call them all kinds of things. Oh, God, no, there's one other name I was trying to think. Let me know in the comments what you call it. Metric or not metric is the biggest thing. It's the same, no matter if it's metric or U.S. Oh, standard. metric or the standard one. No, the same thing. He's, he's trying to tell me there's a metric and a yeah, standard dude, adjustable yeah, wrench. Dude, see, metric. Look. Yeah, it's metric markings, but it still metric. can be used as metric or <laughs> U.S. standard. If it's a USA-made tool, it would be a standard. I'm just going to put it out there. Metric is 100% the way, most logical sense, way to go for everything. Something an EFI guy would say. <laughs> <laughs> well... Let's finish this thing up. We just got to get the pan back on, deep pan. Oh, and I finally got a uh, temperature gauge because I've never known what my trans temps are. I'll tell you this, they were good. <laughs> yeah, they were good. Yeah, because the clutches weren't that bad, right? Or no, Those these. Yours. No, they aren't mine. Yours are. This mess is literally multiplying by the day, ordering so much stuff. Here's just a few things we're going to go through. Uh, I got. AM lines for the trans cooler because before it was a rubber hose and so I'm switching over to that. DEI, Design Engineering Inc. sent over a ton of stuff for fireproofing and keeping things cool like all the wiring and plumbing which is awesome because before I did not have much of that set up. And then uh, here's the new intake. James has the same intake on Ruby. Here's a good example of what the tech -to speed intake looks like with the sheer fab intercooler on a 427 so very similar to set up what's on ruby other than ruby's turbo is a lot bigger than mine and the whole drivetrain is a lot more solid than mine roll cage weight distribution everything but that doesn't mean we can't be capable of low eights maybe a seven i don't know i've only run in a mid eight like an eight six uh, like i said before i want to try and get the car absolutely dialed for an 850 class so i can just repeat it over and over and over again because we've been serving our time and I've put a lot of money into the car and time and blood and sweat and tears, and it's time to get a trophy. So I'm really hoping over the next couple months, over the races that are coming up, I can finally get a trophy because to be honest with you, I've never won a trophy in my life for anything. I've always kind of been like the below average sports guy. And that's kind of why I think Garrett and I drifted away from the whole sports industry is because this stuff's way more fun to us. Can we just take a minute to appreciate the beauty and how much power this motor and this motor this thing's done me pretty well as a loner but i think they've got some other plans for it but look at the difference between these two i cannot wait to get this thing in the car let me show you some other goodies we got set up i got a miser electric water pump because this is the stock water pump that was on the car and oh. You know, just turn things up a little bit. Gonna get it a little bit more dialed. Not only that, but switching over to AN-20 coolant lines. Got the Motion Race Works alternator bracket. So really the only thing that the belt's gonna be on is the harmonic balancer going straight to the alternator right here. Yeah, I put my ring on so my wife doesn't be. Just gotta see it. Wait, what'd you just say? Yeah, I put my ring on so my wife, hey, she's my wife now. Remember last time we did right, this? open up the parts. I really like how Kevin did the wiring and mullet. And so I talked to him about the best way to set my car up because we were considering something like a smart wire from Holly, but I like to kind of keep it a little bit more old school, but as new school as it can get. So here we got some solid state relay panels. Same thing that's in the mullet. It's the race street setup from Leash Electronics. And this is gonna be a super easy way, a lot better than the rat's nest I had before. I mean, I got all my lights set up right here. Let me set this thing down. So this is uh, for all the lights, headlights, high beams, turn signals, brake lights, all built in, even the blinkers built yeah. into this. And then each one of these is a relay. So ignition relay, and then you could have your water pump on this, fuel pump one, fuel pump two, uh, radiator fan, blah, 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 blah. And then all of your inputs and outputs for the relay switches are here. And yeah, fuses, fuses. This thing is going to be the right way to do things. Oh, and then uh, if you saw before, I only had one relay going to each Magnafuel 750, and you should have two, and that's why they're melting. 
So Kevin hooked me up with these guys. This is gonna be a perfect way to power each one of my Magnafuel 750s. Yeah, I got another one of those Yeah, too. I have one for each fuel pump. The only thing I do want to figure out is I have a really beefy pump for my street setup. So it's super loud in the car and it's moving a t way more fuel than I need, especially for just daily driving. It's heating up the fuel and causing it to boil quickly, even at, you know, when it's 80, 90 degrees out. So we got to figure out a way to dial that thing back most efficiently. There's got to be some kind of resistor thing we can That's put not, in. You don't have the pulse width modulated pump in there, do you? No, but there's a way to do that and you hook it to your tack and everything like that. But I yeah. would think there's an even easier way to do it. I think you have to buy a box for it. Really? Yeah. See, I would, if anybody knows of a better way, let me know in the comments because I would just like to not have to spend $500 on a little switch box to make that fuel pump run less beefy. Yeah, and we can have the Holly control the duty cycle of it. Yeah, so, that would be nice. Aside from coolant hoses switching over to AN, I'm also switching over my trans cooler lines over to AN as well. They're this crappy rubber hose that cracks and breaks down over time. And I understand that AN does something similar over time as well. It's really the PTFE that I need to be running, but it's anything's better than what I have now. The whole system shot. So I'm redoing all the AN lines because I have the trans part right now. I'm going to show you the upgrades I'm going to be doing to the transmission as well. I've got the transmission pulled apart. I'm going to show you what I'm changing up here a little bit. This drum here had an eight pack clutch and I'm switching to a 10 pack. Upgraded my uh, trans pump and input shaft. The input shaft was ringless or was ringed and now we're going to a ringless shaft. So should be stronger because it doesn't have the notches in the ring here, which would uh, put a weak point in the shaft allow it to break, which you see on a lot of cars, especially with power glides. I do have this billet valve body, which is super sick. And you just gotta put the pump back in, put it back together, get the valve body back on, and that should pretty much be it for the trans. I'm gonna show you all something I learned on the Erturb over the past couple weeks watching transmission videos. Tail housings, there is a bearing and a bushing type. If you look in here at the light on, you can see there's a bushing in this one and there's a roller bearing in this one. It said that these roller bearing guys are the way to go, right? Yeah, if you look here, this is like a stock casting style. Yeah. Has the hole in it, freeze plug for where the speedometer would go. Yep. And, uh, you know, really nothing wrong with them, but if you look at this, it's the aftermarket cast piece, a little bit more durable. You see in your trans mount, it's beefed up, the whole housing's beefed up. It's got the roller bearings that supports your yoke better on your dry shaft, gives yeah. you less strain on your output shaft, mm. and then uses a little bit thicker of a seal to keep the I think I'm gonna be switching to a gear vendor pretty soon though. If you do that, then you I know a guy who's got a power glide with a gear vendor who's switching to a different transmission. You'd be able to actually keep up down on the streets. <laughs> that would be nice because I normally cruise at like 50, 55. Let me tell you guys a little bit about the fuel injector clinic. Right before I tore this car down, we had issues of a lot of fuel getting in the oil. I'm talking like quarts, quarts of fuel getting in the oil anytime I'd run it. So obviously with the amount of smoke coming out of the exhaust, there's a stuck open injector, at least a stuck open injector. Now I'm not surprised because I didn't ever run a fuel filter on my race side. I did run it on my fuel, on my pump gas side, but never on the race side. So to have stuck open injectors, not surprised. So when I tore the car down, I knew I had to send the injectors off. I found them on Instagram, Fuel Injector Clinic. They're here in Florida. It takes like 12 hours to ship them out. They literally had them the next morning. Let me show you the before and afters on these fuel injectors. All right, so here's the injectors here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As you can see, they were 2200 cc injectors, I believe. I think they're Bosch 2200 cc injectors anyways. Numbers four and five were pumping about 1427, number three, 2396. I mean, look at the difference here. So the boys called me up over after they got them pulled out and cleaned up and looking a lot more consistent. Now, there's still a 6.7% spread between number six and whichever one's the highest, I can't tell real quick, but before we had a 52% difference, now we have a 6.7. They said, hey, that number six is a little too low. If you order a new one, 
it'll probably bring that ratio a lot closer together and be a lot more consistent for the amount of fuel being injected into each cylinder, which is obviously what you want. You want each cylinder firing on the same amount of fuel, air, spark, everything to be going smoothly so that the engine runs perfect. So I ordered some more injectors as spares and to replace that number six one because it's not healthy and I want this motor to be healthy. I mean, look at the amount of work, money, and time I'm putting into this thing. She is, she's my baby. She's my baby. Now, just so you guys know, I've said this before in my videos, but I pay for all my parts. I like to support the companies that support my brother and allow him to be able to do the things they do and for me to be able to tag along. So, you know, it's the least I can do. It's they let me hang out and work on my car in the shop and use their tools and ask for their advice. We live. The guys at DEI Design Engineering Inc. hooked it up. They sent us a bunch of stuff. They sent me a message because my turbo blanket looked like it had been shredded by a dog overnight. I mean, it was just falling apart and they're like, hey, let's get you a new one. So I sent them my address and they straight hooked it up. They sent us like four boxes to completely redo the car to cover all the wiring fuel lines, things like that to completely protect it from heat and fire because don't want, don't want fire, obviously, right? All right, so let's get to it. Let's see what we got. Okay, that's, that's your, your kit right there. Ooh, easy loom. Easy loom. Since I am rerunning all the wiring in the car. This is a lot nicer than the stuff you get on Amazon because I did it with the Amazon stuff before and it just <laughs> frayed like crazy no matter what it caught on. That's gonna be sweet. So let's see what this stuff is. Probably got some specs on here. Yeah, peak temp rating 347 degrees, melting point 500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's actually a lot for a limb. 347 That's a lot. degrees. Yeah. I mean, if anything on your car is over 300 degrees, it's probably running too hot. Yeah. Other than the exhaust, obviously. Ooh, turbo blanket. That's a big dog one. Big dog. Dude. This is way nicer than the one, other one I had. And it comes with this wire to help hold it on tighter. A safety wire. A little safety wire. Turbo shield. Nice. Nice. There's some stats on here. Nope. Moving on. Gotta love a big box. You got another one of your intakes on over there too. Wait a second, why am I using this? Everyone always bragging about their Kershaws around here, but let's be honest, Benchmade's where it's at. We all know that. Oh man, that's a call out right there. Nightfall. Kershaw versus Benchmade. You wanna, yeah. Let us know in the comments, Benchmade versus Kershaw. Yeah, that's a good battle right there. Oh shit. They're hooking it up. What do we got? Look at the label, might be some more turbo blankets. Turbo Shield Gen T4. 3 T4, T4. Titanium, yeah, that's uh, Leroy. It's, t it's Leroy T4. T4s? Mm -hmm. I think what I've got is a T6. Yeah, that's what you, that big dog one you opened up was. Nice. Ruby, T6? Yep. Yeah, they had sent me a message to let me know this stuff was on its way, and they had spoke <laughs> to you about it, and they are like, yeah, we got them for everybody oh. in the fleet. That's sick, man. I didn't know that. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. We it got a be. Uh, T4, another one for Ru or Leroy. Yeah. That's T6. A, T6. X. So that's probably for Ruby, right? Titanium. Big dog. Yeah, we'll see which one fits whatever. And a uh, should be another T6. Titanium, yeah, Gen 3. Sweet. And then there's another two more boxes. So you got that big box, which could be like banners and stuff, if I had to guess. Yeah, and then you got right. this box, too. He did say he had some other stuff that he was sending. I'll let you open the boxes and see them, though. Okay. I think you'll like them. Oh, it is a banner. Yeah, some banners and whatnot. Big dog banner. Look at that thing. Shoo, buddy. That is a big one. As you can see, DEI, all the goods. Hooking it up. What do we got next? Got to move that, that intake down there. Oh, sure, sure. It's icon throttle body. One of two millimeter. One or two millimeter. Came to party. I just found it laying around in the shop. Yeah. I don't know. No. Right, I don't say a thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to go fast. As you can see, Parker's been over here just shredding open boxes. Shredding boxes. <laughs> putting his new motor uh, bed together. The, I've been ordering parts for like three weeks, and we've been on the road <laughs> traveling. I've been working like crazy, so I haven't been able to get up to the shop in a while. And so 
I'm like literally a little kid on Christmas morning, as you can see. He literally had a stock, a stack of boxes this high. <laughs> Every day there's a box or two that shows up for Parker. Let's get this last box opened up. Oh my God. All right, we got floor and tunnel shield. Nice. And a, another one. Oh, dude, this is really that's you know, FR that's good yeah. stuff. Put this over your fuel lines. Good to put, go. You can put it over anything. You can run like your thick loom of wire through that goes into the engine bay. If it goes by anything hot, put a chunk of that on nice. there. Nice. Look at it. It's like wool lined on the inside or something. Yeah, this has like a very high FR rate. So he sent me a message and it was like some guy reached out. His car caught on fire while he was racing. They popped the hood off. Literally the only thing not burnt was the fuel lines because it had this on it. Yeah. Crazy. Wild. Well, what's this? Another, another turbo, turbo shield. Turbo shield. All right, I know it's really easy to overlook safety stuff when you're all fired up about going fast and going faster, but DEI is keeping us safe along with what, race clip? Yeah. Race clip. Thanks DEI, we appreciate you. We are definitely gonna be repping all of your products on the cars. Sweet. All right, here's the difference between the X and the non-X for the T6. You can see the X has about an extra inch to an inch and a half of width, but this thing fits like a glove on this 88103. Look how nice it is on the inside. Oh yeah. It is literally probably a half inch thick at FR rate of material. I wish I had the other one. Looks so bad. Pretty sure this. yours just shred it when you take it off. Yeah. Fix that. Oh, there you. Then my new oil paint. No. <laughs> it's not that flammable. Shame. There you Don't go. Call me Iron Long for nothing. Dude, watch the Milwaukee. <laughs> go. Now there's no oil. Where we're gonna weld. I've never ever welded before. Oh, I take that back. I did it when I was like eight years old. I'm gonna try this out. Weld my uh, oil return onto my new pan from the inside here. Daddy, Go all the way around. Let's see. Money. Think she'll leak? Come a little way to find out. Yeah. You know what they say though. Should I do it on the outside too? No. Really? Yeah. Just need to get set. What do they say? It's leaking, it's got oil. If it's leaking, it's got oil. <laughs> now available at baldeagle.com for $20. Right in there and gave it your all and did better than about 80% of the kids in welding school right now. <laughs> I tried. All right, guys, if you like this episode, make sure you subscribe, like, leave me a comment. I'm posting a lot of great content coming up. We got the Christmas tree race in end of December, right before Christmas, which I got to have the car dialed for. It's going to be on uh, radial tire now instead of the slicks, the new Texas Speed 427 with all the motion goodies and uh, beefier power glide. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.